Hey everyone. So I'm here to discuss on some of the most recent aspects, right? So prompt engineering um, is something that I have ignored to be to be very honest with you. So when LLMs came in my initial thinking was like okay whatever that that I gave to LLM LLM is capable enough to give me back the answer and I was pretty happy with how it was giving me the answer. But later what I have discovered is like uh, the more the questions that I was asking the LLM it was giving me uh, a sort of response which I was partly satisfied with and then I was like editing it and I'm very I was like very happy with with what I was getting. Recently I've went through like couple of resources and then I have discovered you can optimize the power of the LLM and you can save your time if you concentrate on the prompts in general, right? And I was blown away by the granularity and the finesse that you can uh, actually make in the prompt to have a better result at what you want to achieve then i was like exploring okay how do i even relate it to something that i do day in day out so i'm basically into network engineering and site reliability and thinking okay LLMs, general questions are all fine and some of the times like the troubleshooting methodologies are also fine but how do I like build it uh, to a point where actually it starts to assist me with, with some of these things. Then uh, there are like couple of resources. So the best resource that I have seen is the prompt engineering for generative AI. The book is the good the best resource that I have found. I have also seen a paper uh, which is released by some of the Google engineers like it shares like what are prompt um, engineering latest trends and it's a very good paper if you can read otherwise like use Google LM to decode that paper and then like make some notes. Uh, in general the guide by OpenAI is also like very very nice and uh, before I say like more about prompts and why we need prompts, I, this is more of a hands-on approach. I wanted to save time for um, a lot of people, uh, for uh, engineers like us or for someone who wants to get into um, something which is not in our aspect of the job but the market is going towards it or probably we have like a sense like okay probably like this might this might lead to somewhere or I have to be better equipped with it when you think about it in isolation all of this makes sense but when when you combine the real life like the dogs the day job the commute the kid um, the spouse and you have to like take care of different responsibilities and you have different aspirations apart from the professional life all of this is like um, huge chunks of time in a day and even for like um, the mental sanity of it it's not like you can read just after like coming back from the work or during the commute right so I took some time and um, thought 80% to 90% of it right can be can be relied and relayed very very quickly so some of the base principles are very powerful. So that can be relayed very quickly. And the remaining 10% of it, like the LLMs will always improve. So let's leave it to it. So 90% of this you can get away within like one hour uh, with just knowing few of the things. So that's what I've just told here. So I've concentrated more on the hands-on approach. We'll see more of a network engineering or an SD um, site reliability engineering sort of problems. How do you build um, an assistant for it? How do you like um, tailor some of the prompts to make sure that you get a very good reply? My background, like I have a couple of um, um, CCIEs and a JNCIE and I have a Gen AI uh, Pro certification from um, Oracle very recently. Now the point of 
highlighting these squares is very simple it's not that i wanted to show it off it's just to make sure or make guarantee this i was just quoting the busy life of all of us right uh, just to ensure that um, i'd probably do a better job <laughs> in in delivering and consuming few of the busy moments in your life and probably i can uh, i can uh, communicate uh, a good amount of um, tips and tricks and the methodology so that with small amount of time you have like the greatest benefit of it so that's that's the intention so these are some of the resources now when you come to the prompting in itself right like i'm trying to make it like very very short so uh, you have zero shot prompting which is most of the times that's what we do uh, few shot prompting just like going from zero shot to few shot you will increase your efficiency by 54% or 60% for sure like that's what i have seen there is cot which is very classic chain of thought a uh, react reason plus act um uh, meta prompting is something that probably you might have already seen like you ask gpt to give a prompt it gives a prompt then you use the prompt back um self consistency is, is a very 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 nice one we'll explore the example of it prompt chaining uh, even this is very close to meta prompting and cot we'll see and generate knowledge is like um, the one which we have been using for a long time but uh, the context of it and the prompt of it would really enhance what what you would do so i'll just for this video i'll start with zero shot prompting and then like i'll, I'll close the video and then we'll go to something else so the zero shot prompting uh, can see like instructs the model to perform a task without providing any of the example such so a like you don't give any example uh, you will just ask it in like one one sentence or one question on uh, do this now previously when there were like no tools for the llms uh, there was no web search or anything it would ha- actually mean like it would have to go back into its memory whatever the training aspect that went into the llms built it then has to like process some of the information and then like figure out a best uh, probabilistic way of like ensuring that it is a better answer because you have not given any of the references so from the training in itself it would think okay this is probably the answer that user wants based on like what i am trained to because he didn't give me or he or she didn't give me anything about it uh it's generally an s or no sort of situation right that's when we like we give me an yes no or like as is the sentiment positive neutral or negativity in, in the statement when it comes to like um uh, the engineering aspect of it right so these are the two examples diagnosis the issue based on this network error message so it says like packet loss detected between router a and router b latency exceeds 200 ms provide a possible cause and recommend a solution um, versus a prompt where you just copy a message and say like what's wrong with my network we'll see both of it right so let's go to like any of the search engines will do right diagnose the issue based on the network error message so this is a good example by the way so the packet loss is detected between router a and router b latency exceeds 200 ms provide a possible cause and recommend a solution no we we is a sort still like when you complete all of these videos you'll see like um, you could do much more with a prompt but for now like this is a good example of a zero shot prompt no if we try to do that i have seen like perplexity um, is reasonably a good resource because like it will also give um, a lot of um, realistic sources it won't hallucinate i mean most of the search engines um, llms are now caught up with it but um, i was staying with perplexity from the start so i sort of like it so now here this is what 
we we get the answer right so it says like the network error indicating packet loss between a and b with latency suggest a combination of connectivity and performance issues here is the breakdown so it says like there can be network congestion uh, a faulty hardware uh, a misconfigured router or routing inefficiencies um, then for the recommending solutions it says like use traceit and then like it, it asks us to use like a ping application to the router ip uh, see if it is sustained a packet loss um, address hardware optimize configuration reduce congestion isp or advanced fixes um, so and so so and so this is fairly a very good example right now if i go back and say let's go to perplexity again this time 200 ms latency ping loss what's wrong with my network now this is actually a very bad prompt unless like you really want um to test like how how it behaves and stuff right so um you have not given like what exactly you want to do still it's trying to do a good job like it's but the methodology is missing now like the task given some of the troubleshooting steps but when you compare it to the previous output to this output it did give us like the trace out it then gave us like the recommended uh, uh, solutions to it um now it is also getting us a wireless interference so it is more thinking around the uh, lines of a general like holistic approach um and there are like it has included security threats now the prompt in itself will guide how you want to drive the output of it so this is like a very basic zero shot prompt that we have built now at the end of it we'll have an agent in in we'll which we'll build in the open ai and then like we'll connect the agent to a emulated routing device which will make sense of it but for all of this to happen let's start understanding the concept of it um, so that we can build our way to the agent x system all right thank you so much so in the next um, video we'll see like what a few short prompting looks like um, we'll see a good example on we have discussed like few short like you you give uh, a a good prompt or a sentence and a message then you give an example out of it like what you want to do and you give multiple times and the third one it optimizes it beautifully so we'll we'll see you in the next next video thanks